Have you ever thought of or considered seriously getting yourself a gravel bike? I know most of the riders by far down here, the roadies, would love to get themselves a gravel bike if they haven't already got one. Next thing is what to look for in a gravel bike to suit you and to suit your budget. Now just like road bikes, there's going to be all sorts of brands and models you can buy out there and definitely with different price ranges. Rather than attempt to answer all the questions that you might have about gravel bikes, we're going to do this. We're going to build this bike from box to riding and it's not going to break the bank account. So what have we got here? It's the Yolio G21 and I'm told that this frame set ticks pretty much all the boxes that you're going to require from a gravel frame set. So well, let's find out. So this is how the G21 comes, frame and forks, integrated bar and stem, seat post, those are bits and pieces, and you've got some frame stickers, but you don't need these little stickers because integrated cables, there's no cable rub anymore. And you hit when you're taking off the foam, don't use a knife, use scissors, because otherwise you might accidentally dig in and scratch your frame. You don't want to scratch your brand new paintwork. <laughs> metal grey but it's metallic and it fades into black on the bottom. This is what you get in your packet of tricks. Just put the frame fork and handlebars and I put them on a little homemade stand here. Remember that homemade stand? Have you made one yourself? Very handy. It's not so much for repairing bikes, but it's good for doing things like this, for displaying or cleaning your bike, whatever. Anyway. So that's it, homemade one. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. So we're going to look at some of the features. Firstly, how wide can you go with the tyres on this frame? Yep, there's a big gap there in the fork. Enough to take a 53C or 2.1 inch tyre. And exactly the same width with the rear stays. So you can fit massive tyres on 53C or what's that, 2.1. So there's heaps of room for nice big fat touring tyres as well as mud guards as well as the mud. And if you're not into touring, well, fat tires also means comfort. Also means you can go over bigger rocks with more control. Front and rear mounts for full length mud guards.
Now there's rear top and bottom mounts for pannier racks. And the same with the front, four mounts for different shaped or size racks. So for water bottle fittings, you've got there and there, the usual, and also under here, you've got another two there. And on top here on the top tube, you've got two there. So effectively you can have four water bottles. One thing I do like is this big chunky bearing up here, nice extra large headset there bearing and headset bearing there, really big. So to take all the vibration, nice and chunky and strong, big fat head tube. Now with these handlebars, they're for integrated cables, but you don't have to use integrated cables. If you don't like the idea or the fuss of having integrated cables, underneath the bar, I'll just show you, you can exit any or all of your cables instead of going through the headset. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll be using the integrated cables for these handlebars so that all the cables will go through the bars. The one advantage of having your cables integrated and not hanging out the front is that if you want to carry a bag on the front, you can without the cables being there and interfering. Just looking at the tubes themselves, they're not aerodynamically shaped. So this one here, the down tube is sort of roundish, then it goes flat. The seat tube here is truncated at the back, top tube, but none of the tubes are specifically aerodynamic. So the emphasis for this tubing on the frame is not aerodynamics, it's strength to weight ratio, which is a good thing. The other thing is, how important is aerodynamics on a gravel bike anyway? Now with these mounts, they have to be specifically reinforced in the carbon. So they're not just holes drilled in. There's a lot of work behind it as well. Now you might be thinking, with these holes, if you're not going to use them, you're not going to fill them up with racks and things, well, what are you going to do with the holes? Put bolts in them? Hmm, bolts, steel bolts, they're going to weigh a bit. Aluminium bolts, you know, bolts sticking out. Bolts, bolts, bolts. Well, you can use these. You can buy a pack, this is a pack of 20 from AliExpress little buttons, nice soft buttons, and they go in there just perfectly in the holes. Look at that, lovely. $1.50 for 20 of them from AliExpress. The Yolio G21 has a dropped rear stay. As you can see here, this right hand stay is lower than this left hand stay. For this reason, the stays are called asymmetric. Here's the rear end of a bicycle frame as we've always known them, and the rear stays are symmetrical. If we want to fit fatter tyres on our bike, then the gap between the tyre and this chainring here becomes smaller. And there's less and less room for this right hand stay to be there. If you move this chainring out, then the crank comes out, the pedal comes out, and our foot comes out. Our stance becomes wider, and that's definitely not efficient for our riding style. We could squash the stay skinnier, like this, but we can only go so far. You could make dramatic frame building techniques like this to accommodate, or you can simply drop that right hand stay to make everything fit in nicely. So firstly the right hand rear stay, very difficult to get the camera around the corner through the bottom bracket shell and looking straight into the stay, but we managed to get a good glimpse here. There's the rear derailleur guide sleeve, and unfortunately that's about the only decent view we could get of the rear stay. Very clean though, isn't it? Left hand stay, there's the brake hose guide. Would like to get closer to the exit hole, I couldn't but the carbon work here just looks really, really good anyhow. Well, let's have a look down in the seat tube. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Excellent. You can see the rivet nuts coming up firstly for the bottle cage and the ones further down for the front derailleur hanger. Good close up of the rib nuts. There's some bits of carbon sheeting splayed out as the nut was pushed into the hole. Not the tidiest of seen, but tidy could also indicate that the hole has uh, been drilled slightly oversized and might allow the rib nut to eventually work loose in the hole. Maybe these ones have been pushed in fairly tight, splaying some of the carbon out. Not a bad thing, not necessarily, and I've not heard of yet of a uh, Yolio 
frame having a loose roof nut yet. The down tube, again difficult to get the camera right because you've got to go through the head tube or through the bottom bracket shell, either way. Looking in any of these tubes, you've virtually got to go around the corner. Very clean looking, just like the other tubes. I would say the whole frame is going to be like this, but we'll just quickly check out the other tubes. There's the rivet nut, same sort of story there. A bit rough looking, but that's fine. Maybe that's the way it is. If you've seen a rivet go through a piece of sheet metal, you look at the back of it, you'll see it's not all that tidy either. If you force an object through carbon fiber, it'll splinter up anyhow. Head tube going past the bearing and that carbon work looks good enough to be on the outside of the frame. Very nice. There's a bit of a label there, probably a production number, serial number or something. You can really see how the EPS technology that Yolio used, which is a high pressure latex bladder, is really working for the inside of their, their frame and the seat post and the handlebars. Top tube, going through the head tube there and around the corner. And very clean again. It's just going to be the same scenario. There's the rivet nuts for the bottle cage on the top tube. They're looking a bit cleaner actually. Nothing to see here much. It's all very, almost perfect. Fork steerer. Let's have a look down the forks. As you can see, clean as a whistle again. So Yolio are using the same high pressure bladder technology in their fork, at least in the steerer anyhow. Very good. As you go further down, you can see going toward the crown, it gets a little bit messy. Doesn't it look a bit like a spider's web down here? <laughs> but it always, I've not seen a clean fork down this area, right on the crown for the steerer. So it usually gets a bit messy down here. But the main thing is it's not gonna break. So if they put a lot more material on there, that doesn't matter so much, just makes it a bit heavier, but as long as it's not too thin or prone to break, it's the last place you want a breakage on a carbon frame. Very good. Seat pole, why not? Let's have a look. A few scratchy scratches at the very beginning there. That's all right. Now that's fine, looking really good. Looks like going down a tunnel in space. Now, as you get closer to where the um, seat clamp is up the top, it'll obviously change maybe shape or structure somehow because they need to make sure it's nice and strong there. Don't want your seat coming off at the seat post. So I'm not sure what we're looking at here apart from that's the clamp area. It's obviously some reinforcing and extra material there too. Handlebars, why not? Let's have a look. So these are the H21 handlebars, and they're made in exactly the same way as the H9. The H9 is the road bar, so these have got the flared ends, of course. So looking in the end there, that's the guide for the DI2 wire. That's if you want to have your junction box at the end of your handlebars. Very smooth, no problems. Okay, now we see that patch there. We're going around a tight corner. Handlebars are very curvy, so you know, straight pieces of carbon fiber and you want to make curved and a curved object, well, you're going to have some patches like that. But nevertheless, it's all very well done. It's nice and smooth, nothing lifting. No folding of the carbon, wrinkling. Very good, very good. A quick glance inside the stem. Nice and smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Not to waste your time, it was all smooth, bits I could see. Difficult to get the camera, the eye of the camera around inside the stem properly, but nevertheless, it's all very nice. Looking at the interface surfaces of the bottom bracket shell, smooth, no excess material needed to be filed or sanded off, and no pitting. Both sides were the same, very good. Eccentricity, or how round the hole is, I don't have any gauge blocks to check this, but Yolio's reputation for good tolerances is well known, so that shouldn't be a problem either. Comparing the gravel to the road bar, where you hold on with your hands on the hoods is the same width, and yet if you put them in this perspective, you can see the ends are splayed outwards. So when you're on the drops, your hands are wider apart on the gravel bar than the road bar, and when you're on the hoods with your hands, your wrists are angled inwards a little bit more. Some specifications on the gravel bar. All this information is on the Yolio website. 
these bars come with the frame set so don't forget to select the stem length and the bar width that you want and the bars also come with this carbon fiber head unit mounting kit having a look at the website for the g21 there it is and there's different colors you can get these are just sample colors if you want you can have your own color just email yolio have a chat to them and i'm sure they'll come up with some color scheme might take a bit longer for a custom paint job but i'm sure they'll be able to help you out there next is frame sizing there's six different frame sizes to choose from we'll just zip down to the frame sizing chart here look across the chart for your height go up and there's the frame size yolio do this with all their frame sets it's really handy a bit further down here for cabling external or internal if you choose external then yolio will provide you with a fork with a hole near the top on the left fork blade and that'll be for your brake hose to go through if you want fully integrated cable then just choose internal a few more details note here you'll need a bb386 bottom bracket unit for this frame set compatibility there you go four water bottles mudguard compatibility yes racks yes and a humongous tire compatibility 53c well that's it all we need to do now is put it together and then we can get on it and ride it and see what it can really do